Hi everyone, Yes here and today we're going to talk about keeping reptiles while having disabilities. I want to start by saying that I'm only going to be speaking from my personal experience and sharing things that I do to make my life a little bit easier. I can't speak for anyone else with any of my particular disabilities because we all have such vastly different experiences but hopefully some of this will be helpful to others who share some of my struggles. I have fibromyalgia which for me manifests as regular chronic pain with occasional bad flare-ups. I have asthma as well, so as a result, I have a weakened immune system and a sensitive respiratory system. I'm also proudly neurodivergent. I have ADHD and am autistic, each of which come with their own fun little challenges and strengths. I sometimes see videos or comments making fun of people for doing things like wearing gloves with a snake they're not comfortable handling. And I want to do my little part in destigmatizing using whatever tools are necessary for you to provide the best possible care to your pets. Gloves are just another tool for us to use and there's nothing good or bad about them on their own. So this video is going to be broken up into four sections. First, I'm going to talk about the things I do to manage my chronic pain while working with reptiles. The second section will be workarounds for what I playfully call my broken brain. Section three will be bonus allergies because I have a good amount of them. And then section four will be bonus bonus benefits where I'll discuss some of the benefits to my health and well-being of keeping reptiles as pets. Stick around because there's actually more than you might think. First off, chronic pain. Water dishes. I use deep water dishes, but all of my large ones now are oil drain pans, which are round and have handles. I used to use just large tubs, but they were rectangular so the water would tip back and forth and spill and they were awkward to pick up. I have a lot of pain in my hands and I have to be careful about how I lift things, but I can still move big bags of sand around, so obviously there would be other considerations if strength were a bigger issue. I do want to have larger water features, at least for Margot the Boa Imperator and Chapo the Savannah Monitor, and I'll definitely be getting it wet back when I do that because I'm currently at my limit for most water I can carry. Small thing, but I also refill the water in enclosures and carry it over in small jugs that are easier for me to handle. I also keep small Tupperwares handy in the room in case I'm having a bad day and I'm not able to remove their water, I can still give them a small amount of fresh water in the meantime. Bioactive keeping. Substrate changes nearly killed me when I first started keeping. When I learned about bioactive husbandry, I dove into research right away and made the leap. Every single one of my enclosures has a cleanup crew and live plants, leaf litter, all that good stuff, so that I can have a little bit of help and also a little buffer if I'm not able to get to something right away. I still spot clean, but in my established enclosures most of the time, the cleanup crew can handle the waste and it's just up to me to remove urates. Pacing myself. I used to power through things until life forced me to stop, and I'm still guilty of trying to do that now sometimes, especially when I'm excited about something. In my case, it's better to work hard for a few hours and stop while I still have energy than to keep going until I'm exhausted. If I do the latter, I will still be exhausted the next day, but if I stop when I still have energy, the next day I usually feel refreshed and I'm able to work hard again. Passion projects are easy to burn out on. So now I have a routine and try to stick to a schedule so I can make sure everything gets done and I can still keep doing things later. Foam floor tiles. I bought these cheap little foam floor tiles that they make for playrooms so that when I kneel down in the reptile room, I don't hurt my knees. It's made it a lot easier to work in the enclosures and has the added benefit of not being cold tile when my reptiles come out to roam. Mister that locks instead of a hand sprayer. I used to miss with just a regular spray bottle, but my hands would cramp up right away. I switched to the Viva Sun sprayer I have now and it's okay. The connection leaks a little and it doesn't hold the pressure so I need to re-pump fairly often. I want to switch to an electric sprayer in the future though because the pumping can be pretty intensive. Enclosure depth. I learned very quickly after moving Margot into a 6.5x5x5 grow tent that I had made a mistake going with 5 feet of depth. I couldn't reach into the back of the enclosure without going inside and Margot has too nervous and hungry of a disposition to really be open to that. I pulled my back a few times reaching in to spot clean her enclosure and knew I needed to switch it up. She's now in this enclosure that is only three and a bit feet deep and that is much more reasonable for me to reach into. She's also high up on a shelf now so uh, while on a step stool I can reach in without bending down. Broken brain. Wearing gloves. For me, gloves have been such a game changer. I don't like stuff on my hands for autism reasons. And for some reason, 
the reason is shame. Uh, it took me forever to start wearing gloves in the reptile room. I wear gloves to dig up night crawlers for Chapo. I wear gloves when I feed Chapo because it helps me to flinch less if he bites me. With buddy snakes, I wear gloves for the same reasons. Sometimes nitro gloves and sometimes these big thick gloves. I also wear thick gloves with Wutung skinks that I think might bite if I need to move them in emergencies. Not that any of my skinks would try to bite me, would they? <laughs> I wear gloves when I spot clean and sometimes when I'm changing water dishes. The only time I really consistently don't wear gloves is when I'm making a fresh substrate blend. Dirt on the hands is a good feeling if nothing else. I know I have a hard time not falling into shame around stuff like this and toughing things out. But for who? Is the tough guy police going to break down my door if I keep wearing gloves when I handle reptiles I think might bite me? So maybe a couple people on the internet will roll their eyes or say whatever nonsense they've cooked up about how it's not right. They don't need the same tools as you and that's okay. There is literally no reason to be stressed out when you could simply not be or be less so. Routine and husbandry pro. I use husbandry pro to remind me when to feed everyone and to make notes of anything that I feel might be important with my reptiles. My memory is not great so this has been super helpful for me in establishing baselines and having something to look back at to see how things have been going lately. I try to do behavior-based feeding for my snakes, but I still have reminders set up for general timelines so I can make sure there isn't something wrong. I adjust the reminder timings based on how frequently they've been showing hunting behaviors. Routine has also been important to making sure that everyone gets their needs met because I can otherwise be very forgetful. I change waters in the mornings before I feed my dogs to make sure everyone gets fresh water daily. Lumping tasks together keeps me from constantly being in and out of the room as I remember new things that I haven't done yet. I still forget stuff all the time, but part of that is just because I'm constantly integrating new things around here. Desensitization to bugs. So this one is not exclusive to neurodivergence, but I feel like I had some extra challenges around my fear of bugs because of my sensory issues. When I first got flowed to the leopard gecko, I would keep the bugs in the furthest room of the house and dread going in there. Trying to see them in an endearing light and learning more about them has been a big part of my getting used to them. That and exposure. Over time, I've gotten used to the bugs and occasionally I will see a moray beetle doing things that I would describe as cute. So I guess they've grown on me. I still haven't gotten there yet with the roaches, but my exposure to them has been pretty limited because they just live in their little tub. I know bugs can be a big deterrent for people when it comes to reptile keeping and I just wanted to share that at least for me, a fear of bugs can be improved by having bugs in the house in a controlled environment. Bonus, allergies. Mealworms and masking. I didn't think this really fit into the other two sections, but I wanted to mention it anyways. I have asthma and several strong allergies and have developed a few more allergies in my adulthood. Because of this and my scent sensitivity, I wear a KN95 mask when I'm working with the bugs. It's very common for people to develop an allergy to mealworms through exposure to them, and that is usually also an allergy to shellfish. I love lobster. So that's just not a risk I'm willing to take. With the rest of the bugs, I just keep the mask on because they can be a bit smelly. I feel a lot better digging around in the roach bin when my face isn't in there. I also have an air purifier running in the reptile room for their sake and for mine. Bonus, bonus, benefits. I have made healthier routines for myself in creating routines of care for my reptiles. It might sound silly, but doing the dishes every day so that the sink is clean in the mornings when I do my water changes has made my own quality of life better, and I wasn't willing to do that for myself. But for my animals? Yes, I will do that for them. They've also really helped with marking the passage of time. Without calendar events, I usually don't know what day of the week it is, so time tends to feel like it's flying past me. Having more regular events and routines, like Skinks Eat Thursdays, has helped me to slow down a little bit. This part I feel a little embarrassed to admit, which I know I shouldn't, but feelings are funny like that. Anyways, having all of the responsibility and being able to confidently meet that has greatly boosted my personal confidence. I've struggled with depression and executive dysfunction for many, many years, and so when I first started reptile keeping, my greatest fear was that I would fail and need to surrender my animals because I couldn't take care of myself, let alone a pet. Watching myself rise to the ongoing challenges, meet them, and continue to advance has been really important in my own personal development. 
I didn't trust myself before, even though I knew I was competent, I had many accomplishments and awards, I didn't feel like any of it was real because I was failing myself at home. I take care of myself now and I take good care of all my pets and I'm going to take better and better care of them in the future. I really can't explain how much that means to me um, and how healing it's been. Then there is the fact that it's fun. I have fun sometimes. And more than that, my reptiles make me happy. They bring me joy. Watching them makes me happy and that is priceless. Finding joy while we watch the world spiral down the toilet is fucking hard, y'all. There's also supposed to be microbes in living soil that make you happier according to science. I don't remember the study, but I remember I started making a conscious effort to stick my hands in the soil more often after reading that, and I am happier now than I was then. It's definitely not just the dirt, but hey, maybe it's a little bit the dirt? I really didn't want this video to just be focused on challenges to the point of making it seem like this might not be worthwhile for me. I've been told before by a lot of different people in a lot of different ways what my limitations are and what I can and can't do. And because of my history with panic and anxiety, I've had it suggested to me that I quit entirely when I felt stressed or challenged by my work, be that with reptiles or in the past as a touring artist and activist. The world also does a pretty good job of making it feel like people like me can't handle responsibilities or challenges. And I think that's bullshit. I'm not going to pretend that I can do anything if I put my mind to it. I have real limitations, and that part is true. But giving up on your dreams is not an option. It definitely shouldn't be anyone's first choice. We can adapt, learn, change, and grow into our dreams. And honestly, a lot of the people that become hardcore herpetoculture hobbyists or work in the industry are neurodivergent themselves. I don't have the numbers on it, but it feels like that's the case anyways. Before I leave, I really want to stress the importance of patience, self-love, and self-acceptance. People in culture will try to make you feel awful for being disabled, and we don't need to help them. They're wrong and also short-sighted. This stuff can be really hard for people to talk about, and as much as my values tell me I shouldn't feel any type of way about it, I'm still a little bit nervous about being public about my disabilities. But I know that I have a lot of privilege within the communities of chronic pain and neurodivergence, so I feel it's important to do my little part to destigmatize disability. Now, I would love to hear from you all. What are some things that you do that make keeping reptiles easier for you? Are there tools that you love that you can share? I really hope that some of this was helpful to someone. Now, I'm trying not to be the person who asked for this in their videos, but I'd like to reach 100 subscribers. And it'd mean a lot to me if you would consider subscribing to the channel to help me with that goal. Thank you all for taking the time to come and check out my video. This part of the video is my Patreon shout out. Thank you so much to my patron, Billy. My Patreon money all goes towards fostering or rescuing reptiles. If you want to check it out, the link is down below. Take care, everybody, and don't forget to make room for reptiles.